The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company of Wilmington, Delaware, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Lovely Lady with Ted DeCorsia and Edwin Jerome. Before we begin our play, here's a suggestion that'll help you do a good job if you're planning to redecorate a room in your home. Try DuPont Speed Easy Wall Finish, the new easy-to-use wall paint. You just thin Speed Easy with water. It covers walls with one quick coat, even covers dingy wallpaper. For less than $3, you can make the room look like new with DuPont Speed Easy. Every day we read the headlines of the war, and the headlines and the stories which catalog the campaigns are pointed at mass operations. The great raids, the huge sea battles, the mighty firepower. But behind the headlines, seldom finding their way into the stories, are the turning points on which the campaigns often hinge. Sometimes these turning points are the result of an accident or luck. But more often, they are the result of alertness and ingenuity and work. Tonight, our DuPont cavalcade is the factual story of one of those turning points that vitally affected an American division and perhaps decided the fate of an entire army. The DuPont Company presents Lovely Lady with Ted DeCorsia as Private Minnelli and Edwin Jerome as the General on the Cavalcade of America. On a mountain in Sicily, the commanding general of an American division is in conference with the colonel, who is his chief of engineers. Bill, I've called you in to give you the G-2 report. Yes, sir. I can't overstate how serious the situation is. Our 5th Armored Division is in plenty of trouble up ahead. Our intelligence shows the Germans will counterattack Wednesday. We've got to get to that division's aid by then. Gives us four days. We'll move up at dawn. March order will be out in an hour. And do you intend to move the entire division, General? That's right, Bill. I'd hate to see the casualty list if we're not there to reinforce that armored group. Well, this should be a nice little change for us. It was a cinch to move 15,000 men in Africa. All we had down on the desert was space. That's right, Bill. All we've got up here is no space. We've got to move 3,000 vehicles. Why, there are miles along that road where we'll be traveling single file. It's going to be awfully embarrassing when one of our trucks breaks No down. embarrassment, Bill. Pitch it off the cliff. Oh, we'll make out all right, but there are going to be problems. Well, I can't remember when there weren't problems. We had our troubles landing at Casablanca. There wasn't any express highway into Bizzetti. We'll always have our troubles getting to the enemy. Big pardon, sir. Immediate action message. Classification secret. CG River 4 Orange. Previous instructions amended. Intelligence shows enemy counterattack begins Tuesday. You will arrive at rendezvous one day earlier than planned. And well, General Eisenhower has solved all our problems. We're not moving up tomorrow morning. We're moving up tonight. I'll alert my advance party immediately. We've got to be ready for mines, roadblocks, washouts, and landslides. We may reach every one of those obstacles. Well, I don't care how many obstacles we reach, as long as they don't stop us. <laughs> A hundred yards from the general's tent, there are other men of action holding another conference. This one is presided over by Private Manelli. What I want to know is, what are we sitting up here with our nose stuck in the clouds for? All oh, them brass hats, always slowing down to catch the wind. We ain't ever getting to Italy sitting here in our toquet. Well, I suppose they got a lot of problems up ahead. That's a real narrow road, for one thing. Maybe room enough for only one vehicle. Suppose one of those vehicles breaks down. For such a vehicle, I got one answer. Throw it off the cliff. Take the driver out first. Well, it ain't like if we were down in the desert there, they'd have some excuse for holding us up. But up here where we're all bunched together, why, it's a stand. Ah, they'll figure out some excuse. They'll blame it on logistics or some other headquarters where nobody can understand. Uh, you know, Manelli, those fellas haven't had the same advantage as you had. Maybe they have reasons that sound good to them. Maybe they're tired. I don't want to hear no excuses. My barber back in the States give me a girl to look up in Naples. Yeah. Excuses do not interest me. Now, the way I figure it, we have about two weeks to make this move. 
Now, if we're to take it slow, say, move those big cranes out first, then follow them a couple of days later with a team. Ah, you remind me of a guy back in the circus. Oh, uh, here we go again. He was always arranging for the midgets to follow the giraffes in the parade. Are you giving us that circus routine again, Manelli? You don't believe me? Come see Manelli, the tightrope walker. Manelli uh-huh. defies death on the high wire. Come on, you don't believe me? You don't believe I was on the high wire? I don't believe you were ever in a high chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish I knew how long they were planning for us to bivouac here. I don't know whether or not to put shells in the foxhole. There's only one way they'll ever get anywhere. Move forward. Let me take lovely lady. Put me in lovely lady and send me forward. Now look, Jumbo. How <laughs> many times I gotta tell you guys don't call me Jumbo. I used to be a tightrope walker, not an elephant. <laughs> Have all regiments reported, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. The last just came in. They're all standing by. How about the artillery? Colonel Monroe reports the 155s ready for march orders, sir. Contact regimental commanders. Yes, sir. Message, Senator. They put me through to regimental commanders on a conference hookup. Yes, sir. Now, hold on. Oh, uh, come in, Bill. My engineers are hauling at the leash, General. When do we pull out? Immediately. What about that tunnel up ahead? Oh, not a prayer. It'll be sealed up tight. It's a simple demolition job for the Nazis. They'd never skip that. You all set to clear it? Oh, we'll clear it. That's good, because we'll be there at dawn. Fifty miles in seven hours? That's right. And, uh, Bill, don't worry. If we get a ticket for speeding, I think I can get it fixed. <laughs> there, I have the regimental commanders on the phone. Sir. All right, I'll take it. The gentlemen, this is your verbal substitute for a published march order. Observing all security precautions... This division will move out at once. My single command is that nothing, nothing must delay this division. That's all, gentlemen. Good luck, and let's get out of here. Get my men loaded. See you later, kid. Got to check with Jackhammer. You guys are sure lucky being up ahead with the advance party. I wish lovely lady and I could be up front. Well, you got nothing to do until we clear out. Write a letter home. Sure. Give my love to the sword swallow. Okay, wise <laughs> guy. Can it, fellas? He's the colonel. Ben. All right, men. As you are. We've got a tough job up ahead. Got to open up the mouth of a tunnel. This unit will roll at the head of the column. And I want bulldozers to go up with it. Did you say bulldozers, sir? Yes, we'll need the tractors up front. You mean you want my bulldozer, sir? If you drive one, yes. You mean you want lovely ladies, sir? What the devil are you talking about? Forgive him, Colonel. Most of us fall in love with girls. Manelli fell in love with a tractor. <laughs> Come on, lovely. Come on, lady. Don't fail me, darling. Hey, what up there? Come on, baby. Pay no attention to them rabble. That's it, sweetie. You can do it if you try. That does it. Here we go, lady. You and me leading the parade. <laughs> We certainly covered ground during the night, General. You're making good time. Well, sir, one thing that'll hold us up, that tunnel. We ought to be there in an hour. Now, let's see. 5.15. The advance, the advance party's there just about now. Far out ahead of the column, the chief of engineers and his advance party wind cautiously along the road shelf of the Sicilian cliff. At this point, the lofty, narrow trail juts out over the sea. The vehicles have barely a foot of clearance. Well, Captain, we'll be getting to it just around this bend. Yes, sir. Holy smoke! Do you see what I see? Sure. There's the tunnel. Yes, there's the tunnel, but it's open. You're right, Colonel. Oh, they must have blown the other end. No, they didn't. Look. Daylight. Right through. Wait till the general hears about this. Oh, 
What's the story, Bill? Uh, General, it's incredible. The tunnel is open from end to end. You can see for yourself. Mines? Oh, plenty of mines, but we've just finished clearing them. How'd you do it so fast? Well, the tunnel floor is rock. Those mines stuck out like tulips. It was a scent. You checked every foot? Yes, sir, we have. The sides, roof, no sign of an explosive charge? Absolutely none. I'd be willing to stand in the middle of that tunnel until our last vehicle is through. Well, that won't be necessary, Bill. Hop in with us. Right, sir. All right, driver, let's go. What a break this is, waltzing through this tunnel without any delay. Why, we just picked up 24 hours. Do you remember Hitler ever making us a present of a day? Well, maybe we were crowding him. I just don't like the smell of this. General, maybe you're being a little too pessimistic. Maybe. But if I know anything about the way the German army fights, they neglected that tunnel for a reason. The reason being, we've got them on the run. Why... The whole road shelf is gone. I, I've never seen anything like it. Let's take a look at this. Empty space. And the blue Mediterranean below. They've blown it right down into the sea. A whole chunk of road. <laughs> well, I've got to admire this one. We stopped, General. Stopped dead. That gap must be 200 feet wide. How far down would you say it was? About 20 stories. Well, we were prepared to cross any obstacles on this road. Yeah, but they blew the road away. I guess we didn't crowd them enough. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Take a radio message. Don't bother to code it. Send it in the clear. It's no news to the Nazis. Ready, Sam? Commanding General, Mediterranean Theater. Division halted. German demolition of road shelf complete. Impossible to get troops and vehicles down to sea for water passage around Gap. Hurry, hurry, hurry to wait, wait, wait. Here we are again, sitting around on our bottom. Uh, here we stop because there's a hole in the road a little ways ahead. How do you like that? There's a hole in the road. A lousy little hole in the road holding up 15,000 men. And a seniorina waiting for me in Naples. General's a nice guy, but sometimes I think he's getting awful bad advice. There's no need calling a halt here. You're 100% right. Some of them brass hats are dreamers. They see a dinner plate in the road, they got to stop to see if it's a mine. They don't look at things with a practical enough mind. That's right. You got a hole in your road, you just fill it up. Sure. Let lovely lady put some dirt in it. Oh, of course, Manelli wouldn't have any trouble at all. Not Manelli, the tightrope walker. Just let them slip a cable across and he'd walk it. Manelli couldn't walk a six-lane highway. Okay, you cynics. Anyway, I got my own answer. Sling a bridge over that trap door and let's get going. That's it. We've been putting up bridges ever since we hit Africa. Timber trestle, fixed trestle, semi-permanent steel treadway. Let them name it. Sure, nothing stopped us yet. Maybe we're underestimating this thing. There may be difficulties we don't know about. Difficulties? Difficulties is our business. <laughs> Possible move troops and equipment up sheer mountain cliff. Uh, come in, Bill. Yes, sir. No alternate route to rendezvous. Divisions, regular bridging equipment, unsuited for situation. I uh, hate to interrupt, sir. Uh, yes, Bill. I believe my engineers can put a bridge across that hole. We've been scouting for lumber, and I think we've got enough to put up a timber trestle. Timber, eh? Mm-hmm. How soon can you begin construction? No, oh, I'd say about six hours. Will you settle for four? Well, <laughs> all right, sir. Well, that means you'll start at noon. How soon before it's ready? General, the division will be across that gap in three days. We allow for a 24-hour delay to clear the mouth of the tunnel. That chunk of empty space up ahead is now the mouth of the tunnel. Therefore, we'll get the bridge up in 24 hours. What? General, you're not serious. Well, sir, a bridge has to have supports. My men have got to dig them right into vertical rock. Lives of an awful lot of troops depend on our getting to that armored group up ahead. This can be the turning point of our whole campaign. I'm aware of that, sir, but 24 hours, you're asking for a miracle. I'm not asking, Bill. Merely ordering. You 
are listening to Lovely Lady with Ted DeCorsia as Private Minnelli and Edwin Jerome as the General on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company of Wilmington, Delaware, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Our cavalcade play tonight is the story of an American division in the invasion of Sicily. The story of an insurmountable obstacle that faced that division and the way the division overcame it to mark the turning point of a campaign and perhaps decide the fate of an entire army. As our cavalcade play continues, the division has been halted by a deep chasm that crosses the mountain trail where the Germans, in their retreat, had blown a huge section of the road into the sea. The commanding general has ordered a bridge to be thrown across that chasm within 24 hours. In the opinion of the engineer colonel, the general has ordered a miracle. Merely ordering a miracle. Ordering something unique in the experience of a highly skilled engineer colonel. Ordering the spanning of space with no starting point. Just build a bridge. Do you know what that means? It means a complicated and technical series of steps. It means taking what these men learned back in Georgia and putting it in practice over here in Sicily. Building a bridge means seating the end dam, placing the abutment, building the support. It means setting the trestle, laying the stringer, laying the side rail. It means these and a dozen more, all of them difficult at any place and time. But on this precarious cliff, on this emergency night, building a bridge means America winning a war. Hey, Louis, get that hook in there. Can it won't hold. Pass me that wire, will you, Harry? Ready down there? Okay, he's in it. This thing's beating the stuffings out of us, Colonel. Those supports won't stay put. They've got to stay put, Captain. It's after eight, sir. We've been working over eight hours and haven't built the supports yet. Well, drill deeper into that rock. That'll have to do it. The General wants this bridge by noon tomorrow. Wanting a bridge is one thing. Building it is another. I think the General's order is pretty unreasonable. Well, maybe. But if it weren't for a series of such unreasonable orders, this division would still be wallowing around outside of Wadi Zamzam. Look. Over there, at the side of the road. I don't see anything but mountains. Well, the old man is sitting there against that mountain. He's been sitting there ever since we started, rooting us on. If he could, he'd be manhandling one of those cables himself. Where are you going? Well, if he wants that bridge by noon, I'd better get back to the men. Just get the lead out of it. Manelli, your country needs you. Stop the yapping. These timbers ain't toothpicks. Some army. A bulldozer man lugging planks around. First thing you know, they'll be replacing me with a whack. Marlowe, huh? when was the last time you were up till three in the morning? Last night. You sure aren't keeping very good hours. Huh? Maybe we should go to the Riviera for a rest, huh? <laughs> hey, look out ahead of you. Side of the road. That's the general sitting there. Gosh, you nearly forgot. Hey, Manelli. Manelli, step easy. Now, what are you guys whispering about? The Heinies know we're coming. <coughs> All right, gold brick, off the road. <laughs> What's that? On your feet. The old man wants this bridge by noon. If you don't want to work it out of the way. The old man? Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Some dog faces just got a talent for doing no good. <laughs> Can't see a thing over here. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Throw that light this way. Hey, coming up. That's better. I think the least they do is arrange for a full moon. How much longer we got to go? Uh, it's 4.30. Seven and a half more hours to make it. Take up on that winch, Morrissey. Not much more cable left. Hey, Ruben, now. Show us me a cigarette, will you? Okay, but watch this one. You dropped half a dozen in the ocean already. Okay, let's have it. Got it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yes, this is what building a bridge means. It means the voices of men through the night calling to each other, encouraging each other, helping each other. It means teamwork, ingenuity, guts, and sweat. It means a magnificent display of one type of American power the Germans didn't figure on, work power. And with an hour to go, with a superhuman deadline to meet, building a bridge means next to the last step, drift thinning. The great gap in the road shelf, half a block long, 200 feet deep, is almost conquered. Wooden supports now jut out from the rock cliff. 
Another set of supports jut up at an angle to meet them. These two must be fastened together before the floorboards of the bridge can be laid across. Well, sir, we almost made it. What do you mean, Captain, almost? I'm afraid we're late, Colonel. We're just ready to drift in the trestle to the support. Well, it's 11 o'clock. We still have an hour. Yes, sir, but hammering those pins in is a ticklish job. We've started to set up scaffolding to lower a man with a jackhammer over each support, one at a time. Oh, that'll take all afternoon. Four hours anyway, sir. We'll save that time as much as we can, sir. Well, we tried. Really tried. Go away, follow me. I, I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, what is it? Uh, I don't mean to be critical, Colonel, but uh, this is not a very intelligent way of doing things. Not very intelligent? Just what would you do? Well, I wouldn't take the time to set up a scaffold. I'd send a certain man out on those planks with, uh, with a jackhammer. He could finish the job in no time. We'd be rolling over by noon. Those planks are only two inches wide. A man would get killed out there. Oh, maybe an ordinary man, sir, but not me. You see, Colonel, I can walk those planks. Forgive him, Colonel. Manelli thinks he used to be a human fly or something in civilian life. A tightrope walker, a high wire man. Well, even if you were, it would still be suicide. The vibration from the jackhammer would throw a mountain goat off balance. Sure, Colonel, but I'm no goat, and I can do it. All right, soldier. The general ordered a miracle. Good luck. Look at that guy. He's going nuts out there. He's going to fall. What a splash he's going to make. He's going to fall. <laughs> There's a big kid. A two-inch board. I could walk it blindfolded. And without an umbrella. These guys should have seen me when I was performing in the circus. A Keegan, a Gogi, a Duca in the Western Circus. My name in type that big. Manelli the Magnificent. Manelli and his educated toes. Look at that guy. Just like in the circus. He's gonna fall. Hey, shut up. Don't scare him. He's gonna make it. Son of a gun, he's gonna make it. Come on, Manelli. Go to it, boy. In the middle. Now for the turn around like the old days. Now. There. Okay, Mr. Jackhammer. Let's get this show on the road. Here's one for Adolf. And one for Gering. And one for Rock. Ah, there. Secure all around. Didn't think I could do it, huh? Give him a better show if I only had my umbrella. Manelli the Magnificent, the high wire kid himself. And now for the next one. There. I told you he'd do it. The guy's a genius. I didn't think it could be done. Son of a gun, he was a high wire man, Colonel. Well, I'll be. That's the greatest act I've seen since the Hippodrome. One minute to noon, General. The bridge is completed. We're going to send a jeep over for a test run. A great job. Yes, thanks to that crazy soldier. Why, he went out on those planks. I know. A... I was watching back there. What's that man's name? Private Manelli. I beg your pardon, Colonel. Okay, Manelli. What have we done now that's not very intelligent? Well, Colonel, it's not that exactly. It's just that, well, sir, a jeep is too light. I won't prove nothing. Now, if you send me over and lovely lady, it'll mean something. If that bridge will hold a bulldozer, it'll hold anything in the division. Well, it's true. A bulldozer is. Thank you, other... sir. I knew you'd see it my way. I've uh, got room for a passenger, Corporal Manelli. Corporal? Holy Toledo. But, General, you can't come. If this bridge don't hold, we're going right down at the ocean. Well, if it's strong enough for you, Manelli, it's strong enough for me. Throwing gear. Come on, lovely lady. Here we go. Thank you, Ted DeCostia and Edwin Jerome. Now, here is Ted Pearson speaking for the DuPont Company about peacetime explosives in wartime. Invasion left Cherbourg Harbor a tangled mass of wreckage. The retreating Germans destroyed everything they could. 
Docks were a mass of broken stone and twisted steel. Sunken ships and wrecked craft underwater cluttered the harbor. But we needed a port. It was just because we needed a port into which to funnel men and supplies that we'd landed on the beaches near Cherbourg in the first place. Tangled, jammed, cluttered, smashed as it was, Cherbourg Harbor had to be cleared for traffic fast. So, as they had done earlier at Naples, Navy Seabees and Army engineers went to work. And in less than 48 hours, supplies were being landed in Cherbourg Harbor. Uh, dynamite is not a military explosive. It can't be used, for instance, in a gun. But one stick of 60% gelatin dynamite, one small stick eight inches long and not much thicker through than a broom handle, will move a couple of tons of rock. Work that might otherwise require long hours of labor can often be done far more easily with dynamite one of the most powerful tools at man's command. It's because dynamite has this superhuman ability to get heavy work done in a short time that every United States Army division in the South Seas uses tons of dynamite. You've seen pictures of some of the things dynamite has accomplished for our forces in the South Pacific. Uh, one outfit out there had to build an airfield in jig time with no raw materials other than the coral of which their island itself was made. Dynamite dug the coral, providing the material for a hard, smooth flying field. Another common and very important use for dynamite in our country and in tropical areas is the drainage of swamps. Here, sticks of dynamite are planted in a row, then fired to dig a ditch of the needed depth and width. Dynamite is also doing other jobs, quarrying rock to build roads, felling trees and removing stumps to build airports. It's removing boulders, deepening harbors, breaking up derelicts, and doing hundreds of other jobs to help men shorten the war. Whether it's clearing and rebuilding harbors like Cherbourg, draining swamps in the South Pacific, or constructing hydroelectric dams at home, many of the war's heaviest, hardest construction jobs have been seeded by dynamite, peacetime product of the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Next Monday evening, Cavalcade presents The Conquest of Quinine, the story of the centuries-old fight against malaria, dread killer of mankind. The story also of a brilliant scientific victory in a research laboratory that enabled two young Americans to cancel out a great Japanese military success. Tonight's Cavalcade play was written by Daniel Taradash and Julian Blaustein. The orchestra and musical score were under the direction of Donald Bury. This is Roland Winter sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company of Wilmington, Delaware. American industry is in urgent need of forge and foundry workers. The need has been heightened to emergency proportions by the invasion. Husky, healthy men of any age, with or without foundry experience, are being asked by the War Manpower Commission to enroll for a 90-day period to bring production up to quota. Men who qualify will be given a release from their present job, providing it is not one of critical urgency, and at the end of their 90-day stint, will be returned to their present status. 20,000 men are needed at once. Men taking the jobs will be making a real contribution to the war in a time of critical need and will receive good wages. All applicants are invited to telegraph collect to Forge and Foundry Chief, War Manpower Commission, giving their name, address, present employment, and draft status. Men who qualify will be notified in a day or two. The Cavalcade of America came to you from New York. Broadcasting Company.